Um, imagine two water waves traveling towards each other in a swimming pool. Describe the behavior of the two waves when they meet and afterwards. So do, we, do we they do they they do that and that's it, and then they go away from each other? At what point where they meet does it appear that only one wave is present, or can both ba- waves always be seen? At the point where they meet, does it appear that only one wave is present, or can both waves be seen? Depends on the situation. Everything is relative. Like if you were looking at, like, if you have glass, look through it, and you see glass, water, crashing, you see two waves. Okay. Why is that the difference glass? How you can see it. Wait, wait. Like parallel with the glass? Yeah, parallel. What, like, the waves are going parallel with like, the glass. You can see the wave under the water? Which way is the wind blowing in the swimming pool? <laughs> and what's the temperature outside? Because it all this affects it. Are there, are there any kids in the swimming pool? Okay, superposition is the combination Ooh. of two overlapping waves. So they overlap each other and you can have they can occupy the same space at the same time. And the observed wave is then the combination of the two waves. So you have the two waves adding together. Are they both going the same way then? No, I think they're coming opposite dire- from the opposite directions. Okay. Um, so there's constructive interference. So it's a wave when two waves are added together and they produce a wave greater than the two waves separately. Um, because both waves have displacement in the same direction. So see how this wave is larger? but it's moving to the right, and both of them have, uh, their wave is on top of the equilibrium position, and so when they get added together, it's those two added together. Does that make sense? The two amplitudes added together? I think it goes A, B, C, D, so you go like top left, bottom left. Wait, they switch positions? Right, and then they just cross each other and they oh, keep yeah. going. Yep. How does that work? They moves because they can const- they constructive <laughs> interference. <laughs> go. Why don't they go back their own ways? No, look, it goes top left. You're yeah, right. just the right. action. Right. Right. <laughs> yes, it goes A B C D. Yes, and they keep going. So they, they pass through Yes. Yes. America. Deconstructive interference is if um, Wait, so they have. Only at that, like, super point for, like, one moment. Yes, yeah. and then they keep going. They have displacements in opposite directions. So here, one is on top, one's on the bottom of equilibrium, and so it's in the middle. It, the deconstructive interference, but then they keep going, also. They pass each other and keep going in the same directions. Where's the volume? Cancel each other out. Yep. 
No. But this one was like the, the no, positive one that was greater than the They have to have a medium. So reflection, if you have a free end, a free end means a movable end. So on, this is considered a free end because the rope is tied to a pole, but the rope can move up and down the pole. So we have an um, incident pulse, it's called, but the end will come back, will come up, and then it reflects in the same, on the same um, side of the equilibrium. So it produced the same way. Right. Little friction here, but the rope can actually move up and down if that's a pole that the rope is attached to. It can move up and down the pole. And so the reflected wave is on the same um, equilibrium side as the incident wave, the original wave. Whereas if there's a fixed end, so it cannot move up and down, it comes in at one end and then goes down at the bottom from a fixed boundary. It's inverted, it's called. Okay. Should we see if we can see that in our spring? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Good luck, Alex. Okay. Back up a little more. We have to have this one kind of tight. Okay. That's good. Okay, you do not move. And I'm gonna just going to do one pulse on top and see if you can see. It should come back to me on the bottom, right? Yeah. So I'm going to go on top. Ooh. Can you tell? Yeah. Yeah. Go this, you guys should go like this way, like down the middle. Go really far. Like what if I pull down? That's hard. You want to try being oh, I can do free? That. Okay. You got to time it just right. It's going to go down, so you'll have to go down with it. Okay? <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Okay, standing waves are produced when two identical waves travel in opposite directions and they interfere. And the interference alternates between constructive and destructive interference. And so nodes are points where interference is always destructive and it looks like that point would not move. We'll see what it is. And antinodes are points where the nodes are at maximum displacement, where the constructive interference is occurring. Um, so a string with both ends fixed produces standing waves. Okay, so here is uh, the string. This is the what we're going to do in our lab tomorrow. We're going to have standing waves and a vibrate. Um, no, and we're going to try to figure out how many wavelengths we can get in a certain length of string. But only certain frequencies are possible. So one loop um, wave B has wavelength of two B, two L. I mean. Because, okay, so here, this is only one, a half of a wavelength, right? If I have one wave here. Um, actually, let's see. Let's do yellow. Maybe yellow will show up better. Because I'm coming here. That's only half. So then I have to, for one, would be the here. So this length right here to here are equal. I didn't draw it very equal. So that's why one wavelength is 2L. So it's 2L. What would the wavelength be for C? What's wavelength for C? L. Right. It equals just to L. And what would what would uh, wavelength for C or D be? Okay, see how we have one, two. So this is one wavelength. So one wavelength. Two thirds. Two 
two thirds because two -thirds out, one right? wavelength goes from here down to here. So if I split this into thirds, here's one third, two thirds. Two thirds is where the wavelength ends. One wavelength is right here. So it's showing three halves wavelength, but the length of the wave. Yes. Oh, Right. It's showing one and a half wavelengths in that picture, and D has one and a half wavelengths. But how long? The question is asking. Compared to L. So, should we try it? He wants to be my volunteer. So if I want to do half a wavelength, it would just be this, right? Mm -hmm. 2L is the length of the wavelength. If from me to Alex is L, the length of the wavelength is 2L. But what we're seeing right here is just half of a wavelength. Because if this is one half of a wavelength, to see the whole wavelength, you'd have to have oh, two so lengths. Yeah. Oh, I just said that. Yeah. <laughs> you got it, buddy. Okay, let's try to get one wavelength. Nope. Okay, can you see the node? Where's the node? Right in the middle where the spring doesn't look like it's really moving. And then the anti-nodes are at the maximum on either side of the node. And really, my hand and Alex's hand would be a node also. Okay. What did I have to do with the pulse wave that I'm forming? To get to a, to get the wavelength to be shorter, faster. I increase the frequency, right? Okay, let's try to get three. <laughs> Hold on, I didn't want to throw. <laughs> Is that four? Yeah. Oh, that's too fast. So, what would be my wavelength though? Half L, right? The whole thing is one L. How many can you get? I don't know. Five, five, five. <laughs> <laughs> that was five. <laughs> five. Sam, you want to try? No. no. <laughs> Jacob wants to try. Don't break my spring. I practice after this. Ooh. One, two, three, Six. four, five. Is it? Well, it's near shaking over there. <laughs> Five. These are Arabic numerals. It's hard, isn't it? Yeah. Good job, Jacob. Hey, what about the good job for being a sturdy note? Not sturdy. Aurora appreciates it. Okay, imagine two waterways traveling towards each other in a swimming pool. So, 
Would they reflect, e reflect off each other and reverse direction? No. no, they would continue. They would travel through each other and continue. At the point where they meet, does it appear that only one wave is present or can both waves be seen? One. One. Right. And if it was two crests that were meeting, it would be what kind of dis interference? Constructive. Constructive. And if it was the crest and trough meeting, it would be? Destructive. Destructive. Yay! Okay. You guys have the assignment on the board, the chapter review. Oh, that was it.